Hello and welcome. My name is John Hobby. Welcome to the Great Poker Chip Adventure. This is the very beginning. Today we're discussing the Milano Poker Chip. And in the next year, so 2015, I'm going to purchase a new set of poker chips. I'm going to bring you along with the decision-making process as we go through some of these chips I'm seriously considering. I've been around gambling my whole life. Doesn't make me an expert. Uh, we loved these chem cards. This was back in 93, 94, before the internet took off. This was actually a brick-and-mortar store we bought these at. You can see, obviously, the famous... Pick your nose jokers from Kim. Awesome. They still make them like that. I have a new set. These are all up for review. I'm going to review more than just poker chips. Just wanted to let you guys know that. Subscribe. You're going to see lots of interesting gaming accessories. This is going to be an in depth review of these chips. All right. It's not going to be Sandy Miss High Football Rules. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm talking about. Some people make these videos that are just like, here's the Milano poker chip. I bought them, so they're great. And I, they're great because I bought them. Derp -a derp Thanks for watching. Send Demas, go. All right, that's not what this is. We're talking about poker chips from kind of a modern standpoint, a modern take post-Mirage days. Now, Steve Wynn is an interesting story. I'm not going to go into his story. However, he kind of brought luxury to the masses in a gaming environment. And now, I would say because... A lot of his influence, people are looking for more premium gaming products. Before the Mirage, I remember lots of times it was just cheap plastic chips. Nobody seemed to really care. Yes, some people cared, but not as many as care now and are actually spending money on some nicer chips. I would consider the Milano's upper middle class chips. They're made by Claysmith, considered a China clay, 40 millimeters wide. Some sites advertise them as 10 gram chips. My measurements were different. I came in at 9.5 grams, so you're aware, and the thickness wasn't consistent. So quality control overall is average, and it only really affects stacks, I would say, up to 20. When you're talking about small stacks like five, just with like everyday cutting of chips, it's not that big of a deal with thickness cross-denomination. So you can take that for what it's worth. Other interesting things about quality control, the <laughs> flatness is just not great. I have a separate video about spinners. These chips are not perfectly flat, and I wouldn't waste your time pulling out the spinners. There's gonna be somebody out there in the comments with too much money and too much free time. They're gonna tell you to throw away all of your spinners. Don't listen to them. It's just a test of quality control, all right? Just know that for when you buy the Milanos. They're not gonna be perfectly flat. Hold on to your spinners, play with them, it'll be okay. The texture stamping, you can see, we'll talk more about this in design, but you can see there's a texture stamping in these chips, not consistent. There are some chips that just have flat spots where the texture depth is not consistent. So, so far, the quality control has been very average for the upper middle class segment. I mean, when you're talking about a premium, premium chip, you're gonna have different expectations than you would with a upper middle class chip, or for example, ceramic chips are also in a different category than upper middle class compression molded or China clay chips. That's what the Milanos are. Now, where they do shine is the inlay quality control. You're looking at these inlays. Let's just take a few as an example here. Uh, the inlays are lined up with the edge marks. Not only are they lined up with the edge marks, they're actually lined up with the inlay on the other side. Holy smokes. That's pretty good quality control. Uh, let's grab some higher end chips just by way of comparison. Let's do the ones first here. Are those edge marks lined up? Well, kind of. Then you flip it over. Whoa, that's perpendicular. Whoa, again, completely off. Okay, so you see it's just not consistent, even on these expensive chips. Wow, that's news. And let's do these now. These are the Pulsing Classics. Again, edge marks not lined up. Anyway, it's just an interesting quality control thing with the inlays. So that's above average on the inlays. That's good to see on a chip of this price. The shoulders are slightly rounded or beveled, and they're not 100% consistent, but it's such a small difference, I wouldn't really sweat it too much. All right, quality control, done. Average, let's move on to some of the more exciting things. Design, yay, design. 
These are a handsome looking chip. They have the, according to the Claysmith website, they call this the double trapezoidal pattern, compression molded, of inlay that's supposed to look like the Bellagio chips. I was at the Bellagio this summer, 2014. Speaking of which, I have some Bellagio tourist garbage. The inlays do kind of look like the Bellagio chips, so we'll give them that. Now, with the rest of the design, I mean, it's the stitch and line texture pattern, which I'm okay with. I like that they're taking cues from older casino chips. And it's a very handsome looking chip. Pretty consistent too. They also designed the symmetrical edge marks. Obviously with the double trapezoidal pattern, you get that. And some of you will love that, especially if you're OCD. We have a friend that's OCD and every time she gets a stack of chips, she has to sort them so that way all the chips are the right side up. Now, what on earth does that mean? I don't know, but she looks at the inlays like right here, you can see. Oh, look, she'll say, oh no, these are upside down. And so she'll flip them over. Oh no, this bottom one's upside down. So she'll flip it over. And then finally she's like, ah, then she lines them all up. Oh my gosh, it takes forever. Thank you, Claysmith, for making symmetrical lines. So she's just like, zing. Oh no, was this one upside down? And we're just like, <laughs> you'll never know. Oh dear. O C D. Now the color on these, I like. The contrast, you know, pretty consistent. I mean, here are some 25s, you can see these. They do a good job using kind of contrasting colors so it's easy to identify. You can see the main color has the majority of the real estate here on the edge. There are some chips where the edge marks are so big, it's hard to tell exactly what color it is. Maybe that's not the best example, but there are some chips out there like that. So easy to recognize from the edge marks from the side. And the color overall is consistent across all of these. I got these all from the same source. So the consistency of color and thickness, I mean, you'll see people in the comments leaving their thoughts about their chips. By contrast, here's some low-end dice chips. You can see the color contrast between these. And what's funny is these are the newer chip. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's just not consistent colors. The Milanos don't have that problem. They're all consistent across the board. And as far as design goes, when we're comparing these to other chips, let's just roll in some fives here. This isn't exactly a valid comparison as lots of these are in very different price ranges. The Desert Palms is in the price range though of the Milanos. So as far as the colors go on these, kind of a comparison if you're interested in these two. I haven't really cleaned these Desert Palms yet. So the review pending, but that's in the similar upper middle class price bracket. So you can see the color difference there. The scrolls and the Paulsons almost have an orangish red to them on their fives, whereas the Milano has a deeper red. Some of you may like that. Nile Club has a very similar red to the Milano's, again, ceramics. So the color across the board in the design, I would say the design is actually above average. It's a good looking chip. And another interesting point is the materials. All right, China clay. That's what these are considered. China clay compression molded. What does that mean? To a lot of you, that means made in China. Here's an unopened roll right here, and you can see the sticker that's actually faded. It used to say made in China. And there's probably already a comment. Well, it must have been printed in China. <laughs> are you still laughing at that? Lots, all right, not lots. There are some quality large manufacturing houses in China. When you want something mass produced in a quality way, lots of times you can turn to China and you'll find those quality manufacturing houses. But that's not what China clay is. Oh dear, somebody's scratching their head. Most of you know this, I'm not trying to insult your intelligence, but for those of you that don't know, understand that China clay refers to a type of clay called kaolinite, all right? Now, there's different types of clay, like marillonite that's used like in oil drilling and stuff, and you chemical engineers that work on oil rigs know that. But for a lot of you manufacturing engineers, you recognize China clay immediately and think, aha, kaolinite, right? Well, is that what these are made out of? They just don't 
say. And a lot of people, it's synonymous with being made in China, but the reason why they nicknamed kaolinite China clay is because there are huge deposits of kaolinite in China. So if you're going to have something made out of kaolinite, it's most likely going to be made in China. And it just, uh, you can see how it doesn't really matter. But there is that double meaning. You should be aware of that. If you see something that says China, er, that is being sold as a China clay, but it's made in Malaysia or Korea or, you know, somewhere else, don't scratch your head and make a big stink about it. Oh, how come it... No, because China clay refers to kaolinite. Now you know, and knowing is half the battle. But there's more to it than just the clay that goes in here because they also use plastic. What kind of plastic? No idea. Well, why does it matter? Oh, dear. We need to fly through this section, otherwise you guys are going to get bored. So I'm going to fly through some things. If you have some questions, leave a comment. I might not be able to answer, but somebody else will. Okay, plastics matter because of UV degradation. So like, for example, ABS chip, triple nitrogen bonding, it's a strong material if you're going to make drainage pipe, but if it's going to be out in the sun, it will degrade. So it does matter. What about PVC? Polyvinyl chloride. It can be in high quantities or long exposure, which you probably wouldn't worry too much about with poker chips. It can be hazardous to your health. So you don't want something made out of PVC. Again, it's UV sensitive. All right, well, what about lead? And now again, somebody's scratching their head. Well, what do you mean lead? Well, for example, Paulson's 2007, 2008, lots of them were tested. They had lead content in them. That's how they weigh their chips down. And studies show that to an adult handling, even dealers handling Paulson chips all day, it's not really a threat. Just wash your hands before you eat. Don't eat Twinkies at the poker table. They're not really an inhaling. You're not really going to inhale the dust. They don't create dust that you would inhale. So it's not really a threat that way. And they're not for kids to play with. Obviously, a choking hazard and all this other stuff. And don't get me going about lead. I have lead round ball. I shoot cap and ball revolvers and rifles. And I understand all the risks. I lock up all anything that's lead. And only when the planets align and the wind's blowing in the right direction and I hold my mouth just right do I go out and shoot to protect myself from lead vapors. Is that an issue with the Milanos? I don't know. They haven't released that information. Claysmith, here's an opportunity. Claysmith, are you watching? If you can, publish the lead content of the Milanos if it's really low, if it helps you out. Say, hey, Paulsons have lead in them. Milanos, lead free. Bam, huge selling point. You would win my vote if you came out with something like that. So materials, very average. We've talked about the clay, we've talked about the lead. Let's talk about the feel and texture. The Paulsons have what people describe a chalky feel. I agree with that. The Milanos, yes, a little bit, but not to the same extent. They, they feel a little more plasticky than the Paulsons. They're not as soft. They wear better than the Paulsons do, but they wear comparable to other chips in their segment. For example, the Desert Palms wear in a similar fashion. So wear and durability are average, and this durability word comes into play when you're talking about this particular chip. I was filming a segment about materials with these chips, just playing with them, and I cranked down on what this chip and it broke in my fingers. The All right. That they need and the just like that. In my half footage, I'll probably roll it in right I just now. Totally broke that with my Is fingers. that, Did you see that terrible? No, that's fingers. not terrible. It's just a sign, again, of compression molded when you're talking about a chip that doesn't have a metal insert. All right. The same thing, well, something similar happened with the Desert Palms. I was doing a sound test, just recording it, see how they sound, see if I could tell a difference, and I chucked the Desert Palms onto my craps table, just a stack of them, okay, this stack, this stack right here. I just threw them onto my craps table, followed by several other sets, including the stack of Nile Clubs. This might be what broke it. Either way, it landed on this chip just right, and when I picked it up later, I was just flipping it, it broke. All right, so this is in the same price segment as the Milano's. Very similar texture, the plasticky, chalky feel. Not quite as coarse as the Paulson's, but still has that, you know, slight chalky feel to it. Broke as well. So durability and wear average. And as comparison, when you're talking about wear on a Paulson, you guys are familiar with this. You guys have, I'm sure, been to Vegas and handled Paulson's where there's just, see how there's that purple coloration on the pink section right here? It's just wear. The Paulsons wear really quick. That's why you get that dust all over your fingers, lead dust all over your fingers. So these don't wear 
these don't wear as well, meaning they wear more rapidly than the Milanos. That's just how it is, all right? Now you know. I'm sure lots of you already knew that. It's not like a groundbreaking news or anything. When you get a softer chip like the Paulson, it's just gonna wear faster. Durability and wear, very average. Now we can really dive in and talk about the cost and value of these chips. As far as competitive options go, there are a few kind of store, online store branded or various other China clays that maybe have been customized by a store in mass to sell. So those are kind of in the same price sometimes if you get the store brand ones. Like for example, there's a company that makes China clay pharaohs. I would put those in a similar category as these. Obviously the Desert Palms are in a similar category as far as price and value go. So these are again, come out as very average for their segment. They do have a unique look though that a lot of people will appreciate. Another segment that it's sad I even had to include on these chips, there's actually another set that came with a smell. These smell like carpeting and dirt. It's hard to describe exactly what they smell like, but they do have a distinctive smell. So be aware of that. I tried to oil some of these. I'm not sure if it's gonna show up, but half of these fives were oiled with the hope using mineral oil, 100% mineral, with the hope that the smell would go away, and it didn't. It may have reduced the smell a little bit, but not enough to make any difference. The biggest factor in the smell is time. I've had these for about three months, and they smell a lot less now than they did right out of the package. So you know, don't worry too much about the smell if you get these. It will subside over time. That's my experience. I might have just grown accustomed to the smell, so it's hard to say exactly. Another nice thing about the Milanos is they give you a little extra status for your money. These chips have that very distinguished look, and a lot of other chips in that same price range don't exactly look super, super high class. So a lot of people find that the Milano's give them that little extra status. Obviously, if you're looking for like real status for people who are big time gamers who really know poker chips, you're gonna go with Paulson's. I mean, it's a name brand. But Milano's for your average homeowner, average home, you know, gamer, gambler, will be better than, for example, the ABS dice chips that so many of us bought in college, you know, or whenever, when we wanted something nicer than our cheap little grocery store plastic chips. So status, you know, maybe slightly above average, but pretty close to average when you're talking about this value, this segment of poker chips. The next two segments do not excite me, all right? I'm just gonna combine them into one segment, shuffling and sound. To me, these are not decision points for me. I do not base my decision at all off of these two things. Like I said, growing up, I, it, as long as they don't sound like pogs or cardboard, I'm okay with a chip sounding like the steel insert ABS chips, next gens, Paulsons, or Milano's, all right? As far as I'm concerned, they're all acceptable sounds. Who cares? And the other thing, shuffling. Shuffling, I haven't found a set of chips that are completely unshuffleable. Shuffleable, is that a word? It is now. Anyway, <laughs> it's just not associated with value. Kind of like weight, all right? Ooh, this weighs 11 and a half grams. That means it's better than the nine and a half gram Milano. No, the Milanos are easily three times the value of these ABS chips, okay? So weight is not associated with value. How easy they are to shuffle is not associated with value. And the sound, I don't, I don't know. Sound is sound associated with value. Some of the expensive Chipco ceramics are comparable in price to the consumer, the consumer Paulsons, and yet they sound very different. So it might come down to preference, but it, is it really that important? I don't know. For some people, maybe it is. So here goes.
right, let's see what else there is. Average, okay, for those, I don't, I don't even know. For me, I'm not worried so much about the materials, but the looks. The looks are handsome. I would, I, like I said, I rated it above average on design, but just because something is designed well doesn't mean it's appealing to me. Does that make sense? Um, let's use these top hat and cane as an example, all right? Now understand, this is not a fair comparison as these are upper middle class chips and these are high-end chips, but I'm just making a point here, all right? So please forgive the jumping of segments here. Now, look at these chips, all right? These Paulson chips are a party in a handbag, all right? They don't worry about little things like making straight lines, for example. It's a chip, right? They're gonna be compressed, who cares? Slop them in there, made in Mexico, Kertrunka. Don't worry about lining up the inlays, just make sure they're embossed so they don't come out. <laughs> Look at that, it's awesome. It's a blue one. Look at this one. Some of these just look like they're made in Mexico, just with the colorations and the big party, you know? It's like a fiesta. I love that. It's just off the wall, it's crazy. To make an analogy, these chips are like impressionist art, and the Milanos are like a photo. Impressionist art is not something you're ever gonna confuse for a photo. You're not gonna look at a, a famous impressionist work and see the painterly brush strokes. You're gonna see the brush strokes in the paint and you're gonna think, hmm, that is made on a lithograph, on photographic paper? No, 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 no. When you see it in person, you'll see how thick that paint is and you'll be like, oh my gosh, that is somebody who is bold and daring and making a statement and has some emotion and passion and feeling in what they're doing, all right? That's the same effect I have when I look at these. This is passion, this is just trying to look nice, okay? Photograph impressionist work. Now, there's gonna be some art PhD. Well, chips aren't art because they're mass produced. Yeah, I know, all right? These are not made to be art. They actually have a purpose. They're actually poker chips. I'm not saying they're art. I'm just making a comparison as to why I'm not a fan of these. Now, I'm not a fan of these either. And I have bunch. I have whole bunches of these, but I'm not a big fan, and I'll talk about that in the separate review of the Top Hat and Cane Paulsons. However, these don't do it for me. They don't, they don't have that zing. There's no excitement about them. So not for me, but if you love them, I can recommend them. My name is Hobby John. I hope that helps somebody out there. Please subscribe and please share this video and leave your comments. Thanks for watching.